Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Underrail Expedition. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today, as I know where it is. It's over there. I didn't go there yet, but I was exploring over there. I, when I'm talking about this is the elevator, we're talking about the elevator. I was exploring to the northeast, and I was like, oh, I remember. There is another elevator up here somewhere. It's in one of those areas, but it's broken. And I'm not actually sure it's an elevator. It, it is a gate that looks like an elevator. Oh. Hello? Oh. I did not expect such things as these that are happening in my presence. But still, the... Yeah, the... Ooh, there's a lot of them. The off-camera exploration was... Was just me wasting time. Please don't miss. Okay. That's fairly okay with me. Then that one should kill that. It didn't. Are we going to be okay with that? Yes, we are. I have action points for days. And with any luck, I can get you. But I can't. So, with any... Oh, I was going to say with any luck, you can get, can't get me. But that is a lie. Oh, there's another one. And it's a big one. It's a big one. Okay, do that over there, and then this right here. Lovely. That's what I'm talking about. And now these things, they don't, they're not going to have anything interesting. And besides, we're not going to craft anything anymore. But if I could get some oddities, that'd be nice. Unfortunately for me, I have gotten all the oddities that I could get out of them, out of those creatures. Oh, this, of course, it's this area. The quintessent, oh, no. You can keep the, the quintessential uh, under rail area that I praised so so high. And here we go. Elevator controls. Save the game just in case. As you never know. We have a save from the beginning of the episode, so it's fine. Oh. I don't like that. Oh, crap. A familiar shape materializes before you. In an instant, his request that the cube be returned to the faceless surfaces from your memory, and so does the fact that you have done just the opposite. He is... Yes, I have taken the, the cube from the faceless. That didn't, actually. But anyway, he is motionless, and remains so as he speaks. Short is no more. Yeah, you were right. The only way for me to leave the deep caverns was to kill short if you have forgotten who this is this is six this is the uh, the fellow that uh, we talked to right at the beginning of us exploring the deep caverns probably 20 episodes ago or more uh yeah you were right i was correct yes that's similar it's, it's the sa it's a synonym actually and the two of us meet again other events await my our participation that is why i am here I'm looking for someone, someone who pretends to be one of your own kin, but is not. Oh, who? Hadrian Tanner, as he calls himself. Just as, just as your lips separate to sound the most obvious question, you hear the answer preceded. Oh, that didn't, yeah. Uh, was it very obvious? It, it wasn't. What happened? Why is he not... Why... I mean, Tanner... We haven't talked to him in hundreds of episodes. But he was... Uh, we never got a mission again from him. He was in Core City. And, um... He specifically... He was, you know, part of the big uh, quests... The, or the main quests at the beginning of the game. Very much so. But I never really understood that he wouldn't be one of us. Of my kin, specifically. Tanner must die, and few but myself can make sure that occurs. I am a powerful being, and so is he. We are the same kin, yet he conceals it better. The reason should be obvious. Nothing, none of this is obvious. None, absolutely none. Certainly not the reasons why he conceals it better. Because that would imply, the reasons why you do something good, better than other person is you know, related to the how you do something better than the other person. Like, for example, do you play the guitar better than another person? What are the reasons for that? 
you know, they are definitely not obvious. There's no, ob there's, there's no, situ well, I mean, unless you know the people, you know, intimately, then you would know maybe the reasons are obvious, like somebody actually plays the guitar and the other doesn't. But the, po the point is, I don't understand what any of this. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's kill him. Uh, what did he do to deserve death? He committed a crime. I realized that, and that's why I asked. What? That does not concern you. So you need me to get to him? No. Tanner is no longer in Southgate Station. Yeah, he hasn't been there for a while. He knows I am after him. Wait, is Tanner... Hadrian Tanner. Was he the one that actually went to Quartz City? Or was he the one... No, I'm mixing them up. Either way, I, none of this is obvious. I'm mixing them up. Tanner was the other one. So there's like this three, these three people that are the bosses of of uh, of uh, Southgate Station, and uh, one of them is Vera, the other is Tanner, and the other one is Gorski. That's the one, Gorski. I remember Vera was was really interested in. Oh, I'm connecting the dots now, even though it's still nothing. None of this is obvious. Vera was the one that wants us to become part of the Protectorate, which we might now that I helped the Protectorate so much. Uh, Gorski is the one who's an absolute jerk and trash, and also l the leader of the military, effectively, of Southgate Station. And Tanner was the one that actually set us on our main mission, on the mission to get the cube. So it makes sense that this would be, you know, sort of a comeback. Or not comeback, but, you know, it's, just, it's, it's, it's coming all, all back to him again. He knows I am after him, and if I am correct... He should be on his way to North Underrail. Our events are connected. Yours, Tanner's, mine. I do not know why, but I do know that such is the case. Yes. As I saw you being an essential participant in the destruction of Tort, namely you are the only one, perhaps you are also an actor of similar importance in Tanner's, or even in other events. It's an option I would be foolish to disregard. After our conversation comes to an end, I will travel to North Underrail after him. I would recommend you do so too. North Underrail. This is important. We need to remember how. But yeah, all of the destruction, or all the destruction that emerged from the events we have witnessed is the consequence of his actions, in one way or the other. And his actions are unlikely to deviate from the norm. I wonder if he had the cube... That's why all of this happened. That's why the faceless attacked, and then through some shenanigans, the cube kept moving from one place to another. Although Tanner might have been behind it in terms of you know sending the the traitors who had the cube in the first place, um, the ones that we found. I think we found the woman, but not the man. It was a couple, a woman and a man, um, and um, I think we found the woman, but the man never appeared. And I don't... I always, I said at the time that there is a way to, to see that man. And it, that might have been my memory of finding that man now at the end of the game. Or something. I, I, I don't know. I, don't, I really don't remember if there's a way. Because we never did find him. Or her. Either way. One or the other. And his actions are unlikely to deviate, deviate from the norm, says Six. If you want to prevent similar events from occurring, then North Underrail should be your next destination. You will be able to find me in a place called Hexagon. Ask for six. Well, do I remember where Hexagon is? Because I... That name is not unfamiliar to me. North Thunder Rail is this way, as we can see by our compass over here. Yeah. He's a dangerous individual, individual, and if you're right, he better be stopped. I will go to North Under Rail. Good. The faceless blockade is no more, so the railroad should be unobstructed. The artifact. Give it to me. I intend to keep it for myself. Do not be foolish. You are doing yourself more damage than good. Give me the artifact. No. His response is swift and does not give you time to react to it in any way. Hmm. 
<laughs> or here I come. Oh, the elevator was stopped for a little while. I'm still stunned. Oh, look at where we are. We're in next to the... Um... Oh, it's because it's not the same elevator as the one that we came down on. So I was dazed? Because I got second chance. Stunned. I was stunned even though I'm immune to it. I have a perk that allows me... Or a feat that allows me to be stunned. Uh, is it actually a feat? Yes, I believe so. Thick skull. Whenever you should be stunned, you're dazed instead, which reduces your action points by 15%. That just applies dazed. And that was a cutscene where I got stunned. If you were expecting to get a different ending, because you get Thick Skull instead of whatever else you want to get, then you don't get a different ending. <laughs> like, for example, that. I believe I would have normally been stunned in this particular occasion. But instead, I wasn't. Ooh. Okay. Let's go with the normal. Okay. So, as I said, I think I know where... Oh. Oh, yeah. Fluorescent snout. Yeah. I think I know where we are. We are next... Oh. Yeah, elevator, no power. No kidding. Uh, we're next. I, I thought I thought we were actually in uh, scrapyard and whatnot. So where are we supposed to go? We have the SGS. So we are in the lower caves. So I need to go to one of the under rails. Oh, these pigs! Whack whack. If you're by yourself, everything is fine. But we're definitely gonna need to go to. There still remains from, from my previous expedition. The save games of this game are enormous, by the way. That's all because the game doesn't re delete data. So this is... Yeah, this is directly to Southgate Station. How exactly is it to Southgate Station, though? Okay. That's how. Or rather, it's not how it, it, it is directly to Southgate Station, but rather, how did I forget that it was? And the reason is... Oh, yeah, we can't go over through there. The reason is that there's rocks. And by the time we're exploring these bits, we don't have a way to destroy the, sh the rocks. Yeah, this is that one area that I know so well. Because this is a good uh, common passage point. And you just go this way. And explore... Or not, don't explore. That's not what you do. Find some uh, um, bandits over there. And uh, yeah, but basically you return to you know other places that you visit... And of course, this is right by SGS. Oh, you just do that. Fair enough. Excuse me. Hey, Malcolm. Let's go to... Administration and Library. I should talk to Vera. She's the only one that sh that's here. Or that should be here, anyway. From the moment you stepped into the room, Vera's eyes were fixed on you. However, you are aware that the worried look is not only due to your lengthy absence. Carrie, I'm so glad you're alive. After we heard protectorate forces were moving towards the Institute of Chort and not hearing from you for so long, we became really worried. Well, we have yet to determine if I'm actually alive, considering the things I've been through. I understand, and you deserve rest. I wouldn't want to delay it any longer, but something happened. Tanner disappeared. I know. She pauses. So, the word is already out? N well, uh, no. I mean, sort of. Whatever. Uh, tell me about Tanner's disappearance. He left his office some time ago, and no one has seen him since. No one saw him leave through any of the station's exits, which, uh, l like he vanished. This has never happened before. So many things are happening around South Underrail, and his disappearance worries me. Vera looks at you as if waiting for uh, to say something, or wanting to say something, but th that statement seems like it has been replaced by a, a different one. We still haven't checked his room. Since you are here, I think it is best you do it. Uh, why me? Usually I would approach Gorski with these kinds of things, but since he still is in Core City, that leaves you as the one I would trust the most with something this important. In that case, I guess I'll have to do. See Ezra. He will let you into Tanner's room. Keep your eyes open and try to find anything at all which might shed some light on what is going on here. Ezra, on my way. Good. Meanwhile, I think it's time I assemble the council. 
Return to me once you and Ezra inspect Tanner's room. Well, I thought I was going to inspect Tanner's room. Not, not Ezra as well. Anyway, Ezra is in engineering, I believe. It's been a while. But I am correct. Ezra? Ezra looks at you with his one good eye and speaks in his usual calm and even fashion. Have you spoken to Vera? That's why I'm here. I'm ready to go to Tanner's room. Ezra presents the key card to Tanner's room. Follow me. There. I will wait here while you inspect Tanner's room. Won't you help me? I wouldn't want to get in your way, Carrie. Okay, I'm going to take a look inside. And be cautious, just in case. Do you know something I don't? If I did, I would have told you by now. Right, I'm going inside. Okay, first off, turn the light switch on. File cabinets are empty. Desk is empty. Shelves have patching kits, adventure repair kits, nothing important. We got a The Sims icon over here. That's actually an inspecting or an inspectable thing. Hiccups as well. Oh my god, my hiccups. I'm very sorry. Got some lockpicks and some batteries. And this. Oh, it's shimmering. Do you see it? I'm not sure if it comes across on, on camera. But it's shimmering. You stare at the odd picture in front of you. Oh, of you. Its seemingly solid surface is occasionally shifting before your very eyes, and soon you begin to wonder if it is solid at all. I'm gonna touch the picture. As your hand comes closer to, uh, to touching the picture, Ezra's words of caution pass through your mind. You ignore them. A warm sensation pulses through your fingers as they meet the surface and vanish in it. They feel as if you are pushing them through a viscous fluid, and they also feel distant. I am gonna push my arm through the picture. Slowly, your arm disappears up to the elbow. The warm sensation now travels all the way to your shoulder and slowly proceeds further, creating a feeling similar to blood flowing into a numb limb, but more intense. Which is, it must be absolutely unbearable because the, the, the feeling of... It's actually... It's, it's not... It's <laughs> I understand what this... <laughs> I was going to say. Because this is very painful. No, it isn't. A numb limb doesn't, you know, you don't, it, it's, a numb limb is not a blood flow stopped. It is the nerves. Um, it's, it's more to do with the nerves than with the blood. And um, it's, the blood is always flowing to a numb limb. It, even if you don't feel the, the limb coming back to, from sleep. If, if, colloquially speaking. Anyway, but more intense. However, after holding this pose for a few more moments, the warmth begins to dissipate. You know, and your arm feels gone. Your mind begins to panic, screaming for the severed limb, and pain before becomes excruciating. The pain becomes excruciating. I'm gonna go through the picture. Despite the burning urge to pull your arm out, you instead push your whole body through. For a brief moment, it feels like you swam through thick, warm liquid, yet you are clean upon passing through. The pain is gone, and you get to the other side, whole. I don't know what that was supposed to be. If you're wondering that, I, I'm wondering that as well. A hacking of 135. Just to show you, in case you don't... Oh, I can't activate this. I can't. It's not... Um, it doesn't have enough charge for some reason. How much charge does it use? 15. That explains it. So, if you didn't get enough hack hacking through the game, you don't get this box. Unfortunately for everybody, it's just a plasma core. So, eh. Metal fragments, though. I see you. You're somewhere. I just can't see you. I wish this game just... The, the, I wish. I really wish this game had an interface upscale. Or not an interface upscale. It definitely has an interface upscale. And I think I upscale it up by a little bit. Is it controls? Video? Yeah, what, what I wish it, it did... Wait. That didn't... That wasn't there before. Um, so I played through the whole game without knowing that. And this is a lot better for, for, for YouTube. Because, you know, it's very tiny. I'm playing on full HD. Right. And you do, can't zoom out, which is a, ver 
a little bit unfortunate. It's really good that you can play at 150, though. It does make the image a little bit... Yeah, this is this is good stuff, though. This is the good stuff. Let's go with this. Where are these metal fragments? There they are. They're like red things. You see fragments of what appear to be a realistic human face mask. That's it. Judging by its positioning, this could be some sort of a console. If you have no idea how... Or, but you have no idea how it would function since it has no obvious displays or controls. I think there must be something else in here. But I can't see what it would be. Yeah, every time like I take a screenshot, if the game is in this in this thing, every time I, stay, I take a scre screenshot and I zoom in, uh, to make the picture bigger. I see so many details that you just can't see normally because there's it's literally pixel wide Like you see those little things over there. Those are like I don't know what those would be but Here we are As you step out of the picture you are startled to see Ezra staring at you. You have found something Interesting he says Yeah, you wouldn't believe what I just saw there Maybe I would I've seen plenty of things during my lifetime Wait, did you know about this picture? No, and still calling it a picture seems rather inaccurate, inadequate. Based on, well, it doesn't. It really doesn't seem rather inaccurate, in, in, inadequate at all, because the picture is, it's it's still a picture. It just functions as another thing. It's, it's not like the, <laughs> what I'm saying is, you know, a door can be a picture as well, and vice versa. Based on what I have just seen, he says, tell me, Carrie, what was on the other side of this portal? It's a picture. A small room with a stasis cell of some kind and two desks. There was a chemical set and a number of different chemicals there, along with what appeared to be mask fragments. Ezra's... Ab Ezra absorbs your words, but the only response you get are a few slow nods. You know something, Ezra. The things you describe are familiar to me. Over the years, there were a few instances where I was able to peer into Tanner's mind. Faint shapes of what you described was what I saw. I was quickly expunged, however, in every single one of these instances, so I know nothing of the purpose or meaning of those things. Tanner's disappearance is a mystery to me, as it is to you, Carrie, and now I believe is the time to share your findings with the rest of the Council. Yeah, let's go see them. As you were describing, no, as you describe what you saw in Tanner's room, you can clearly make out expressions of growing astonishment on the council members' face, or faces. You finish, and with that, the room instantly becomes noiseless, silent, as if empty, until old Jonas speaks. And there it is. What are you talking about? What am I talking about? Weren't you listening, woman? This is the moment. The moment where we finally sit down and discuss the man. If he even is a man at all. Who's been a mystery to us for all these years. Yet we never dared speak about him. It. Man. Whatever. I know we were all thinking the same of him. Yes. Vera pauses. Tanner was a mystery, as you said. His disappearance, his background, or lack thereof, and just his presence. He stood out, and it's something I felt as soon as I got here. But no one ever spoke about Tanner, ever, and... No, no one ever spoke about Tanner? No, yeah, people spoke about Tanner, uh, to me specifically. Sixth spoke about Tanner. Anyway, many people. Uh, Vera, for example. We are talking about Tanner. Uh, and he was a competent man, so I accepted things as they were. I think it's... No one ever spoke up about Tanner. Which also wouldn't work. Sp to speak up is to complain. But not complain in the sense, you know, you would say no ever, n nobody ever complained about Tanner. Which would make sense. But if you say spoke up... That implies that there's something that we are analyzing specifically, 
and there is, but there there's no reason why you know the fact that Tenor isn't human. That's that's what we're talking about here specifically. But nobody would ever speak up about that because speaking up is about something specific rather than complaining. You can complain generally speaking, but but you can be com you can complain about somebody without actually being without speaking up about that that somebody. Sp speak up is a fun is a fun term to think about. I don't. That's not a term that we have. It doesn't translate in Port into Portuguese, my native language. It's just very specific. It's a very specific type of complaining, is what I'm talking about. It's it's accusing somebody and complaining, and it's my yeah accusing. Yeah, it's probably accusing. Speaking up is probably accusing somebody of something. Either way, uh, he was a competent man. So I accepted things as they were. Well, Vera, it wasn't only you. I remember Tanner when he came to the station. I had hair and more teeth. I still have hair, just not that much. And also the teeth. And the epithet old, he does air quotes, was far off from becoming stuck to my name. Oh, yeah, because he's old Jonas, right? Tanner, he looked barely, barely different than what he looks now. Oh, yeah, he's a vampire for sure. But we're out of time for the day, so we're going to have to figure out why he's a vampire in the next episode. For right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Under Rail Expedition. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment. Like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.